Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. What powers the sun? The answer seems obvious. It must be nuclear energy to allow the sun to shine for billions of years. But that assumes, as Sir Arthur Eddington did in the early 20th century, that stars are isolated objects in space. And because it had been found that the fusion of two hydrogen nuclei produced the most energy, and hydrogen dominates the sun's outer atmosphere, Eddington assumed that stars are a gravitating ball of hydrogen gas. The astronomer George Gamow wrote of Eddington, he was able to find out everything about the interior of the sun and other stars without leaving his comfortable study at Cambridge University. Eddington famously used to say, it should not be too difficult to understand such a simple thing as a star. The misguided certainty of mathematical theorists becomes conspicuous. As Gamow continues, astronomers can tell the temperature of the central regions of the sun and of the many stars within a few percentage points and be quite sure about the figures they quote. So scientists have labored ever since using Eddington's simplistic model in an attempt to produce nuclear energy quote, like the sun. Although the model doesn't predict any of the complex features seen on or above the sun, the certainty attached to mathematical models is entirely misplaced if the physical model is incorrect. Unbeknownst to the general public and to many scientists, an alternative electric sun model was proposed in 1979 by an engineer. It has the critical longevity of all electric lights. It is plugged into a galactic circuit and galactic circuits are the basis of plasma cosmology, which is ignored by astrophysicists, but was developed by experimental scientists and engineers in the 20th century, and it has proven to be predictive, quite unlike mathematical Big Bang cosmology. Only in the last few years have the circumstances arisen to enable the electric sun model to be tested. Called the Sapphire Project, the cutting-edge engineering firm Ortas International Incorporated was contacted by the International Science Foundation to experimentally test the electric sun model. Ortas International Incorporated is an independent body which has no affiliation with the Electric Universe or the Thunderbolts Project. Recently, the Sapphire team shared an extraordinary update on their results to date. Today. In part one of this two-part presentation, physicist Wal Thornhill discusses the SAFFIRE experiment, its results, and its promise for the future. History was made on July 7th at the University of Bath Electric Universe Conference in the UK, when the 2019 SAFFIRE project update announced the success of the SAFFIRE experiment at the end of phase two. On September 2nd, it was shared publicly on the Thunderbolts website. SAFIRE, S-A-F-I-R-E, the cryptic acronym means Stellar Atmospheric Function in Regulation Experiment. In plain language, it is the electric sun experiment, which aimed to reproduce in a lab on Earth the plasma features of the sun, from the photosphere outward into space, to do so reproducibly and to show that it was self-regulating. The aim was to let nature show us, if the model was correct, how and why stars like the sun shine so steadily. It followed the example of an early pioneer of the electric universe, the Norwegian scientist Christian Berkeland with his Torella, or Little Earth experiment, which he performed at the end of the 19th century. Berkeland demonstrated auroras using an electric discharge to a magnetised sphere enclosed in a vacuum chamber. Amongst other things, he predicted an electrical connection between the Earth and the Sun, composed of electrons and flying ions of all kinds. In modern terms, he had predicted the solar wind. The concept of electricity in space was clearly not taboo in the 19th century. Montgomery Childs, who is president and founder of Autos International and manager of the SAFIRE project, together with the physicist Dr Michael Claridge, provided the experiment update. Monty summed up with these words, In all our experiments and discoveries, we have found no disparities with the electric sun model. 
We believe the SAFIRE experiment validates and supports the electric sun model. The mind-blowing consequences of these words may not be immediately apparent. The SAFIRE experiment was an independent audit of the electric sun model by a Canadian engineering company, Autas International, with an interest in solar energy. The project was funded by the International Science Foundation, ISF, whose mission states that it was established to support promising new research in the sciences, placing a spotlight on innovative ideas that have met initial scientific tests but lacked recognition or funding. The ISF places its highest value on prospects for far-reaching discovery. These goals are sadly lacking in mainstream science, where experts are far too quick to defend the status quo and declare unfamiliar proposals impossible. At risk was the life's work of a number of scholars who are responsible for the electric sun model. Such risk-taking is not something seen in today's inventive science, where model failures are everyday occurrences, but rarely seriously acted upon. Generally, they are dismissed by qualifiers such as the phenomenon is not fully understood, which are weasel words for send more funding to continue searching for imaginary particles and forces we may invent so as to save appearances and perchance score a Nobel Prize. This shows that extraordinary disproof is required for modern institutionalised science. The sapphire results now proves cosmologists and particle physicists don't understand stars. Eddington's complicated, untestable, century-old model is wrong. We don't understand the universe at any level, from the subatomic to the galactic, and everything in between. Some background to the electric model is necessary here. Autas International had developed a new solar panel microfilament technology and was investigating new energy systems. Monty first called me in Australia in 2011 to find out if I could help him with his research since he had looked at the electric sun model and for the first time in his extensive engineering experience he could, in his words, find no disparities. That is, no inconsistencies when he compared it to the standard solar model. So I introduced Monty to my Thunderbolts partner in the US, David Talbot who persuaded him to write a paper addressing his stated concern that if, after 14 years of our Electric Universe collaboration, we don't test the Electric Sun model, we may find ourselves in the same place in another 14 years. So on January 7, 2012, Monty presented an experimental test of the Electric Sun at the annual Electric Universe conference in Las Vegas. An engineer from Flagstaff, Arizona, Ralph Jurgens, had his well-researched electric sun model published in 1979 under the headline Stellar Thermonuclear Energy, A False Trail. Shortly after his untimely death, his friend and colleague Dr. Earl Milton, Associate Professor of Physics at the University of Lethbridge in Canada, edited Jurgens' unpublished material. Both Ralph and Earl, like many others, had been inspired by Emanuel Velikovsky's 1950 challenge to astronomers in his best-selling book, Worlds in Collision. It demanded critical attention to dramatic early global stories of an incandescent cometary Venus and battles between named planets hurling thunderbolts of the gods, which raised fundamental questions about recent electrical activity and orbital instabilities in the solar system. That was the gauntlet Velikovsky threw down at astronomers. Electricity plays a role in celestial dynamics. Critical support for this foundational challenge to gravitational cosmology came at a historic meeting in Portland, Oregon in 2000, where the leading expert in high-energy plasma discharge phenomena, Anthony Peratt, matched the various worldwide petroglyph representations of the cosmic thunderbolt with the complex forms of plasma instabilities he had documented using the high-energy Z-Pinch facility at Los Alamos National Laboratories. He wrote later of the uncanny accuracy of mythology originating in prehistory that precedes by millennia what is discovered in high-energy density plasma experiments today. 
It explained why our prehistoric forebears around the world had laboriously chiselled the same strange-looking stick figures and concentric circles into hard rock. Whatever they were depicting must have been seen in the sky and held the greatest importance for them. The echoes of their existential doomsday fears from that time still reverberate in us today. Belikovsky's research should not have been dismissed on the mere authoritative pronouncement that it disobeyed Newton's law of gravity. Neither Newton nor anyone after him has explained the force of gravity. So it was that Belikovsky alone predicted, before the space age, the extreme temperature of Venus, the remnant magnetism in the moon rocks returned by the Apollo missions, and electrically generated radio noises from Jupiter. The last prediction drew Einstein's attention. But astronomers showed they learned nothing from history. As the noted astronomer Sir Fred Hoyle wrote in his book Home is Where the Wind Blows, Velikovsky's book caused a sensation both with the public and among astronomers, the latter becoming stirred to near-violent displays of outrage. Such eminent figures as Harlow Shapley were heavily involved, It could be said that Shapley became angry even to the point of incoherence. They set up a metaphorical modern-day book burning by forcing the textbook publisher Macmillan to cease publishing their bestseller and hand it to Doubleday. Astronomy is still ruled by its fearful high priests. Hoyle seemed to intuit the answer. Could it be that, somewhere in the shadows, there is a past history that it is inadmissible to discuss? So I'm pleased that, inspired by Velikovsky's leading research into the recent catastrophic history of the Earth and humanity, the Electric Universe has an unparalleled record of successful predictions in the space age and is freeing astronomy from its misunderstood past. In 1977, Jurgens wrote, One would think that the sheer weight of space age discoveries, most of them pointing to an electric universe in the Velikovskian mode, might have rallied at least a few professionals. But strangely enough, this has not happened, and it is left to us who might rather be bystanders to take up the study. Earlier in 1973, Jurgens wrote, As I pursued the phenomenology of electric discharges, it gradually dawned on me that, structurally, the atmosphere of the sun bears a striking resemblance to the low-pressure type of electric discharge known as the glow discharge. Of course, this questions the sun's internal thermonuclear energy source. Jurgens stated the obvious. The modern astrophysical concept that ascribes the sun's energy to thermonuclear reactions deep in the solar interior is contradicted by nearly every observable aspect of the sun. He opened up another major front in the battle for recognition and acceptance, this time with particle physicists. Only now it seems it's time for change, with experts declaring a crisis in physics. But the experts don't know where to turn. Their training gives them no historical perspective beyond the October 1927 5th Solvay International Conference in Brussels, where the world's most notable physicists met to discuss the newly formulated quantum theory, which to this day no one understands. That is inexcusable.